here in America today. I, th I think that's pretty frightening. Well, we do need to remember, um, you know, God is in control. And as we see our times just going off the chart with um, some terrible, terrible events that are going on, I think that just to paint a, a real quick historical picture, and this applies to Anita's story too, is, a, is what was happening in Germany at the time. And this would go back to right after the First World War. Germany was left in complete chaos, financially, economically, in every way in chaos. And that was sort of the breeding ground for Adolf Hitler. And when he came along in the early 1930s, what he did was he said uh, to the people, if you'll allow me, you know, almost in a sense, to be a god, and at the same time, if you'll let the whole government here become God, we will resurrect the glory of Germany before World War I. And so the people were willing to engage in trade-offs throughout the 30s and 40s. And then that's when Anita and her story comes into the picture. But there was these things happened before World War II. And uh, the collapse of Germany in World War I is extremely important for us to understand how World War II and Germany played the role there. I think people look back and say, how is it possible that a civilized, educated yes. culture could have allowed this? But you're right, there was a vacuum, yeah. and, and people were jobless. Exactly. People were hungry, and they were looking for a savior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the enemy provided exactly. one. It was unfortunately a false one. Now, Anita, you survived probably the darkest period in Jewish history. You were just a young girl in Germany when Hitler came to power. Talk about that. Five and a half years old. <coughs> yeah. And my mother shared a lot of things with me early in life so that I would understand what's happening. And she told my older sister and me, be very careful. I even had to be careful what I would say to my father. He married a Jew. He had a Jewish daughter. And he wasn't going to be any part of this, two, right? Two daughters. Two Jewish daughters. Yeah. It was too inconvenient. He had a very prestigious job. And he started to side with the Nazis. And it, he just didn't want to be bothered by being married to a Jew. Now, you were very young, five and a half when all this started to happen. Mm -hmm. But as you got older, you became a believer as a young girl. And the Lord walked you through yes. oh, yeah. this horror. Yeah. You survived Yes. Because the Lord carried you through yes, this, yes. right? Yeah. In 1938, my, our pastor that we became acquainted with. How old were you when you became a, uh, when you got saved? Uh, about well, I, before I met the pastor, I was about seven years old. Between seven, seven years and eight, old. Yeah, yeah. And so you didn't come to faith in the the labor camps. Oh, you no. had a relationship already, already with the Lord. Yeah. In fact. And, when it happened one Sunday and I came home and I wanted to share it with my mother and my sister what, had ex ex what I had experienced, oh, well, they just laughed at me, you know, a little kid. They will bow to anything. But at seven you knew. Yeah, you knew I the knew. truth. Yeah. And, and I give my mother a lot of credit that she allowed me to go to church with my playmates that lived upstairs. And uh, I eagerly learned all of it. We also, interesting enough, Hitler still permitted in grade school for a religion to be taught. Later on, no. Believe it or not, the church in Germany was okay with government becoming God in Germany. Not all of them, but many were okay with government becoming God. And as a result, one of the things that Hitler allowed, encouraged into the Nazi church, into the church of Germany, uh, was mysticism. Now, you know, maybe say somebody are saying, what is mysticism? Today, it would be things such as Christian yoga, contemplative prayer, walking the labyrinth, because Hitler knew that would corrupt the church, the solid church, or any church in Germany. That would weaken it so badly. And then the church wanted to be popular back then. It didn't want to get into political issues back then. Um, so, you know, we've got the same thing going on. So we have an ostrich buried our head in the sand yeah. mm -hmm. and just go with it and don't go make with trouble. The flow. Don't, don't make any Follow trouble. Follow the powers that be. Let the picture of Hitler be put up there. Take the cross down. Not all churches. Hers, hers didn't do that. He but didn't put up Hitler's picture in the church either. 
Well, you had an outstanding man of God yeah. as a pastor, yeah. for sure. But again, sadly, the minority, the Absolutely. few. Absolutely. But we've got to learn from history, yeah, don't we? We've have got to. to learn from history We're that the church it. cannot be silent. The church cannot be silent. It's, it's just wrong. Yep. Back after this. <laughs>